Good morning, everybody. Come on in and grab a seat. We're going to get the service started. Brother Paul is on vacation this week, so he is enjoying himself. But we're excited to sing with you all together this morning. So we're going to grab your hymnals. You're going to want to turn to hymn number 27, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Let's all stand together as we sing this song. We rejoice in the Lord's goodness and his creation. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and filled the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full. seven if you would please this morning glad that you're here felt like a really good fellowship day almost feels like we're interrupting your fellowship with worship but we know that's not true psalm 107 if you would please and as you're turning there if you didn't catch it um when you came in and hopefully saw the announcements kind of running on the screen or maybe you saw it on the back of your bulletin cover I know that we have some guests in the building, so I want to explain this right up front. Today is not going to be a normal day today. Today is going to be a very special day because normally we worship, we sing, and then we switch, and I preach, and then we wrap things up and we get you out. But today, the message is going to be you testifying of the things that God is doing in your life. And so today is a testimony and favorite song service. Some of you have favorite songs in that hymn book, we're going to give you a chance to share those with us and we'll sing them together. So today really is a family day. The church that I grew up in always felt like family, and I hope that it does here as well. And so we're going to have fun today together, and the entire service uh, is going to come from Psalm 107. Now I looked to see how long it's been since we did one of these services outside of Thanksgiving, and it's been eight months aside from Thanksgiving. So we are past due. We're going to have a wonderful day together. Psalm 107 is our call to worship, and then we'll open up in prayer. We want to welcome our guests. We're glad that you're here today. We'll introduce ourselves to you so you have a better idea of who we are, but let's start with uh, worshiping the Lord with Psalm 107. I'll start with the first nine verses. We're going to be reading the entire chapter throughout the service. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed... Of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul, and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Father, we come to you with our heads bowed and eyes closed, offering you reverence, respect. And Lord, 
We are intimidated by your holiness. We are overwhelmed by your power. But we are secured by your affection. We have been redeemed by your forgiveness. And we are motivated by your plan. And so, Lord, as we come to you, experiencing many things in the world, when we see you who f- see you for who you are and what you have shared with us, we experience more at your feet than we ever could in this life. And so we are delighted to be here. We are glad that you have brought us safely together and we rejoice in it. We rejoice in our salvation. We rejoice in our Savior and the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And so with great joy, we worship you today. Father, please take this service and glorify yourself with it. For We hope to give it as a gift to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Go ahead and grab your seats. The guys have come forward to help us welcome our guests. So if you're here for the very first time, we can kind of guess at the impression you got because your entire impression so far is mostly made up of a building. This building is over 120 years old. It's a beautiful building. But just so you know, our church family is not 120 years old. We're a fraction of that. We did not build this building. The Methodist Church built this building. And we started 15 years ago in an elementary school. We stayed in that elementary school for about 18 months getting started. And then the Methodist, hearing about our ministry, contacted us and asked us if we would ever consider buying this building. And since then, the Lord has just been so good to us. But I will tell you this. This building is a reminder of all the things that God has done for us. There is so much after we started our church, that we found out God had done for us. Some of those things God had done to prepare the way for a church plant before I was ever even born. So pretty amazing. And then we consider this building to know that another ministry built this for us. It's just, God is working. And we have no doubt that he's working in your life. So we're delighted that you're here. It's a big deal to us. We have no doubt that God has done much to bring you to this place. And one of the things that I hope you'll realize, if you're able to stick around at all, or maybe just observing, hopefully hopefully, uh, when you came in, you weren't overwhelmed. You know, we get excited when we see guests. But with that said, uh, I hope you'll stick around and realize that a church is not a building. It is the people. The building is just what we use. So the guys want to welcome you. We have connection cards. Guys, would you please make your way to the back? Uh, Looking for brand new faces, we're not going to point you out. But if you would just flag the guys down with your hand, high enough so that they can see it. They'll make sure that you get one of those connection cards. There is a pen attached. Please keep the pen as a reminder of your visit to us. You say, okay, what do I do with the card? Go ahead and fill it out as much as you're comfortable with. In no time at all, we're going to be passing the offering plate, which for us is just simply an opportunity to tell the Lord we love him. That's what our offering is about. And so when the offering plate comes by, take the card and just set it in the offering plate. If that happens too fast for you and you can't quite get to it, I'll be standing in the back at the end of service and would love to get your card. If you're wondering what happens to them, the guys collect them from the offering and they put them right on my desk. I'm the only one that gets to see it and I'm looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better. If there's anything we can do for you, both the ushers as well as myself, deeply desire to be a blessing to you. If you would please grab your bulletins. Let's take care of our announcements and we'll get you back to worshiping. Glad to have the kids upstairs with us today and glad that we had enough people missing that it's not a problem to have the kids upstairs with us today. Uh, But we're going to get you guys downstairs shortly. Um, Pastor Matt is going to be teaching junior church. He's helping with the music today. So we had to start with you guys upstairs. We're glad to have you. Uh, As far as uh, announcements, we have a couple things coming up and a couple things going on that we want you to know about related to today. First, this evening at 6.30 is Faith Builders. I have about four cards that I'm hoping to go through. If you don't know what Faith Builders is, we give anyone that comes an opportunity to fill out a card and ask any question that you want. Uh, Usually they're based on verses or words that are in the Bible, but sometimes it can be something that people are saying about the Bible. But the whole idea is if there's a question that you don't have an answer to, we give you an opportunity to ask it. And so tonight we'll be doing our Faith Builders class at uh, 6 o'clock this evening, I think it's at 6.30, but at 6 o'clock this evening is Faith Builders. We'd love for you to come and be a part of it. Uh, if you've never seen it, tonight would be a good time to come because we're doing 
our normal routine this evening of answering really excellent questions. I'm looking forward to tonight. We've got four. And I, my guess is we'll get through two of them, but who knows? We'll see. So come on back tonight at 6 o'clock for Faith Builders. Gentlemen, if you are willing to sing and be a part of the worship service, the men are going to be practicing an ensemble after the morning service, and they all gather around the piano. You are welcome to be a part. In fact, we would plead with you to be a part. We have a lot of ladies with incredible voices here and willingness to sing. We have a lot more ladies than men, so when we go to do an men's ensemble, we don't have as many guys. So if you'd be willing to sing, we would love for you to be a part. You can meet with Pastor Matt over at the piano after the morning service. Just a couple other things to take care of. Uh, May 10th is Ladies Spring Fellowship, ladies. Just kind of a save the date there for you, and if you're wondering a little bit more information, just pay attention to the slideshow because there's some details that are there. And then next week, Cherry has a handout for you, but she'll be bringing it next week uh, for you all. But um, just want you to see that. Um, and then uh, also for next week is Mother's Day. Um, and I believe, Pastor Matt, you put some invitations on the back table. Maybe you know a mom that needs to be encouraged. Bring them. We'll love on them. Okay. And so there's some invitations on the back. Feel free to use those. Um, and then, of course, when we have Mother's Day service, we don't have evening service. So make your plans accordingly. If you're trying to figure out when you're going to spend time with family, we do not have an evening service next week. We hope that you'll love on mom and take care of her. Really excited about that. All right, that takes care of our announcements. Pastor Matt's going to come. Lead us in another song of worship. <clears throat> Grab your hymnals and turn to hymn number 294. Hymn number 294, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Let's pray for the offering. Lord, we thank you so much that we can come here and worship you. Lord, as we turn our hearts and minds to the offering, help us to give our gifts out of love and affection for you alone. Thank you for this time. We ask you to bless these food or bless, bless these offerings, Lord, to our church. 
to those both in our local community and around the world through international missions. Thank you for this opportunity to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Grab our hymnals and turn to hymn number 204. And on the very first verse, as we go to sing this first verse, kids, you're going to be dismissed downstairs for junior church. So let's all stand together, if we would, please. And as we begin to sing this song on the very first verse, kids, head, head on downstairs for your junior church class. If you would please take your Bibles, go back to Psalm 107. The phrase that I want to point out before we move forward in this psalm is verse number 8. So if you would please go to Psalm 107, verse number 8. And hopefully it'll help you understand why we're using Psalm 107 as our call to worship and the format for our service this morning. We're going to give you three opportunities, three testimonies, and we'll kind of break that up both with Scripture reading, Psalm 107, 
as well as some songs from you all, but we'll do three separate sections. So if you're kind of one of those, takes a little bit to get warmed up, and we're in the third section, there isn't a fourth one. So that'll be your chance. Whether you say something or not, I hope you understand the necessity of having something in your heart you wish you could say. Something that you are ready to say. Even if the Lord doesn't move for you to raise your hand, stand up and say something, everyone that's here should at least think, if I'm going to say something, what is it that I would say? Some of you are going to have four speeches immediately developed in your mind, each with three points, an invitation and an offering. Some of you may come up with one, and you may not say anything, and that's okay. Allow the Holy Spirit, God's presence to lead you, because what we have prayed is that he is glorified by this. Let me show you verse number eight, then we're going to jump down and read the next section. Give you an idea of who we are as a ministry and why it is that we would spend an entire church service just praising God and doing nothing else. Verse number eight, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. You see the word, oh, you see that first sentence, read it. And hear that the psalmist is begging us to worship. That's a beg. That's a plea. Why? Because even though we know that God should be thanked, and we might even do it at every meal, it's very natural for us to assume that he knows. And then we just move on. What's special about today, whether you say something or not, God's going to look on your heart, and he is going to be delighted by what he sees. I'm not asking you to manufacture some false version of happiness. I am asking you to reflect on how much God loves you, what he's done in your life. That might mean reflecting on some things that were very hard. One of the things we know about God is that he takes bad things and he does great things with it. So let's step into our first call. In this passage, we're introduced to the thought with the first nine verses. Now let's look at 10 through 16 and be called to do this ourselves. Maybe you would say, this is me. Verse number 10, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them. Out of their distresses he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and he brake their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Now there is a lot of graphic language in here he's painting a picture and i want to show you that picture just briefly i'm not preaching a sermon but i want to share a message with you if you would just go to john chapter 3 briefly and this is going to direct us to our first session of giving you a chance to thank the lord maybe even now you're starting to think what are some things that god has done for me well then may i suggest that this should be the chief among your list john chapter 3 now i could easily just simply quote the verse uh, the two verses that I want to show you, John 3, 16. But I want you to see them and let them wash over your soul and then connect it with that darkness that he's talking about in Psalm 107. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. Do you have people that you love in your life? I briefly got to spend time with some people that we love. We ran back to wisconsin this past week to go to graduation at maranatha and we stayed at my parents house and we would run into town and spend time with cherry's mom uh, just a couple of those days it was a fast trip we got there in the middle of the week and then we came home yesterday we had an awesome time with people that we love our kids are always so excited to go back to wisconsin they want to know which state are we in and it's great because they have no idea what a state is at least at least in Karis. they don't they don't get states they can't even say them right 
They just know that if we're not in Michigan, they're a little bit closer to Nana, Papa, and, and uh, White Grandma, they call. Terry's mom, they call her White Grandma. And so we had a great time there. If you're wondering why, it's, she has... <laughs> I realize that. You're wondering why, White Grandma? Come back next week, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's two reasons. Number one, she has the most beautiful, godly white hair I have ever seen. But she carries with her kindness in her heart that makes her pure every day. And so my kids have instinctively called her White Grandma. It's her hair, so just in case you're wondering. Sorry about that. The things you live with with your kids and never realize are a shock to other people. They also call Hannah Big Hannah because we have a little Hannah. And I was talking to someone at Maranatha and I referred to you as Big Hannah and they looked at me like I was crazy and I was like, we have two Hannahs. We have a tiny Hannah and we've got an adult version of her in our church family. It's hard to be a preacher just so you guys know. Where were we? <laughs> John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world. On our way back home, the Vesceks were coming back with their family. And we had worked it so that we were all leaving at about the same time. And I don't know if you've ever done this. And when I tell you that we met for lunch on the north side of Chicago in Gurney Mills, before we got to Chicago, you're going to say, oh, that was nice. It was so much more than that. Because it is something special to be in an unfamiliar place with people that you love. The second we saw Adam and Carrie jump out of the van, our hearts jumped and the kids were yelling for them. That's the kind of affection that God has for us. God so loved you. He delights when he sees us. When you walk through the building, he says, oh boy. But this isn't just some kind of light affection that causes him to enjoy us. Is frankly stated, sin isn't enjoyable to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the psalmist writes in Psalm 107, God saves people from sin. If you would say, sitting there, I have nothing to thank God for, can I ask you, have you ever asked him to save your soul? Do you know how much he delights in seeing you worship? For how happy he is that you confessed your sin and asked for forgiveness? Know this from the word of God, from John chapter 3, verse number 17. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Not the church, not good works, by asking Jesus Christ to save you knowing that he'll take away your sin if you ask him to. That's called repentance. I was seven years old when I did, and I don't ever want to get over that. When did you ask Jesus to save you? If you would say, I never have, then let this be the first thing you ever get to truly thank God for. If you ask him to forgive you, if you ask him to be a part of his family, he will because he loves you. Jesus died for you on the cross. He took your punishment. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And so the invitation is for you to be a part of God's family. If you're sitting there, you say, I have nothing to be thankful for. You're a child of God? Yes, you do. You have been redeemed from dark, dark places, from gates of brass and bands of iron. And so, oh, that men would praise the Lord, because God is good. If there's something you'd like to share with us, we'd love to hear it. If you're saying, I've got a song, just hold on to it for a second. We'd like to take testimonies first. If there's something that you would like to testify, we want to hear that. And we'll give you a chance, if God's been working in your heart, just give you a little bit of direction. You want to thank him for your salvation? Do that. If you want to say, I'm thankful for some of the things he's done in my life, we'd love to hear that. And we've got Brother Seth is going to move around with that wireless mic. And uh, if it kind of intimidates you, you can hold it as low or as high as you want. It's just for the internet, for the people that are online worshiping with us. we got folks that couldn't make it today. It's just for them to be able to hear what God is doing. So we're not going to identify you by name. I'll just simply indicate you, and then your voice will be there. We would love to hear what God is doing in your life. Yes, sir, I saw your hand first. Get it out of the way. There you go, right here. He'll, he'll get to you if you just pause for a second. 
He'll come to you after I point you out. I just want to say, first preacher, I'm mad at you because the only thing I wanted out of today's service is to not cry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tired of crying every service. My <laughs> yeah. eyes are drying out. But your preaching really speaks to my heart. Mm. But I want to brag on my Savior in the middle of the week at Amen. work. I just had this craving just to thank him for being good to me. Amen. My kids are pretty spoiled, but once in a while, <laughs> I can tell in their heart that they, they, they're thankful, and they tell me that. And God's done a lot for me and my wife. We were both saved on bus route, saved out of the trailer park. I was saved in Macomb County Youth Home. I was in juvie. I just want to thank God. He's, when we let Jesus in our heart, he changed our family tree forever, and our kids are Same. all doing good. And all glory belongs to him. Amen. He's been real good to us, and I love him. And I'm Amen. not ashamed of it. And if you're in here and you're not saved, try Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not regret it. Amen. That's a good way to start. Thank you. Amen. Good. Anybody else? If you'd like to praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Again, I'm not going to say your name just for, you know, protecting you, but. I'm going to junk. I'm going to stay on that track. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. One of the words that jumped out at me with the reading this morning was uh, in verse 8, the word children. Mm. And, uh, you know, Carrie and I, you know, the Lord blessed me with a wonderful wife. And early on in our marriage, we talked about children and what our desires were for children. And uh, getting to spend time with them these past few days uh, at Maranatha, getting to watch them interact just knowing and listening and, and seeing it, how they love the Lord and they desire the Lord in their lives. You know, when we talk about having children, that we couldn't have asked for anything more than wow. children that love the Lord. And so Amen. Uh, we're thankful. Amen. God is good. That was really good, too. Yes, sir, in the back. Go ahead. So for a while I was working, um, about four or five years ago, I was working at a factory. And um, I was really struggling. It was very hard every single day. And I wasn't getting the pay that I wanted. I wasn't, I was being severely taken advantage of. And I kind of had a moment where I broke down at work. I just stopped, looked up to the ceiling, and I just closed my eyes and said, God, is there something else out there for me? Is there something that you want my want me to go out and pursue. And that night I got a call from my buddy. He needed help out with his dad out in Adrian, out on the drive out to Adrian. His dad asked me, do you want a job? Wow. And from there I started working at, I uh, worked for a plumbing company. And ever since then, I, I love it. It's, it's the greatest job that I've ever had. I can't see myself working anywhere else. Um, and just from there, just from that simple change, everything else started getting better. I met a beautiful, beautiful girl. Um, yeah. We ended up getting engaged. That was another thing to be thankful for. I feel as though my relationship with God has gotten a lot stronger as well. Um, the relationship between my family and everyone else that I've been around, my friends, um, it's, it's some really just a life-changing thing when, he, when you take that simple moment just to stop and say, God, is there something for me that you want me to do? And Sure enough, if you take that time, he will take care of you. Yeah. And every day that you have lived since then has been a gift that you have given to God, and I know that. So I remember praying about that when you made that switch. I didn't know that part. That's what I love about this. I didn't know the part about being at the factory and that you had given it to the Lord. It's awesome, and it's obvious God's blessing. And it's good, man. Thank you. That was super encouraging. Great. Maybe some of you are wondering whether or not it's worth it to follow God. You say, I think I can do a better job figuring it out on my own. Do you hear what that young man just said? Best thing you could do is give it to God. That's good. Preach it, preacher. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Okay, somebody else. We'll do one more, then we'll take some favorite songs because we've got time. Um, Brother John, I'll come back to you. I saw a lady's hand. And then, yes, ma'am, we'll come over to you. And then I'll come back to you in the next session if you're okay with that. Perfect got a ready and willing participant that's always good yes ma'am I was saved at the age of 11 by a sweet Sunday school teacher that led me to the Lord amen and it was
probably a week or so after that with my mom and dad sitting in, and my mom and dad went forward and accepted Christ. My dad's favorite song is, It is well with my soul. Mm. It blessed him to know that every night when he put his head on the pillow, that he belonged to Christ, and he lived his life that way, and I'm so thankful for the mom and dad God gave him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I never get tired of hearing you rejoice in your salvation. What an encouragement it is to anyone that has given themselves to the children's ministry. You're stuck downstairs. The pastor is preaching long. And you wonder, is what I'm doing worth the sacrifice that I'm making? Remember, this sweet lady right here was saved as a child because there were workers that invested in her. So we're going to do it as well with my soul. I'm just looking for it real quick here. Oh, you guys are so great. 256. Do you have it memorized or did you look it up? Memorized. Memorized. 256. Uh, this is one of our church family's favorite songs. If you don't know the story behind it, this is written by a man whose wife and daughters had taken passage on a ship without their dad and husband. And the ship went down and the wife is the only one that survived. She sent a message to her husband over the sea saved alone and he knew that his two daughters had died can you imagine that so he got on a ship to reconnect with his wife knowing that he was going to pass through the same waters that his daughters had just died in and when he was confronted with that thought on that voyage he sat down and he wrote this song it is well with my soul Sometimes bad things happen, but I am here to tell you that an almighty God takes them and does wonderful things with them. Number 256, we thank God for this song, It Is Well With My Soul. Let's go ahead and sing it together. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. Verse 3, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, and Lord, haste the day. Faith shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Soul, 
Let's go back to Psalm 107. We're going to keep the service moving. Don't worry if you didn't get to pick your song. We'll give you a chance. Let's move to the next section. Let God's word speak to our hearts as the Holy Spirit brings it to life for us. Psalm 107, we pick up our reading in verse number 17 and watch for verse number 21, that call to worship once again. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. and He saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his work with rejoicing. Certainly there are those who have experienced the goodness of God after messing up. And the psalmist is taking the most extreme case. These are the guys that don't deserve for God to be good to them. They have been redeemed, they were set free, and yet they went back into trouble. They sinned again, but know this, God still redeemed them. So he does good things to us. And maybe you'd like to say thank you for some of the things the Lord is doing for you. What are some good things he's given you? Blessings that are in your life. We've got a volunteer to go first in this session. So we'll come, we'll come on up here to one of our deacons. All right, I'm going to read a verse that um, the Lord's laid on my heart for the last month or so that's really been driving a lot of my devotions and also what I do on a daily basis. It's um, Ephesians 4.1. This is Paul writing, I therefore, the, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So the one that really hit me is the vocation. For those of you who don't know, um, I left my job at the beginning of the year and took the leap of faith with two young boys that I'm going to start my own thing, right? Uh, create my own work, be an independent financial consultant. Little risky. Uh, but that's not what I'm actually here to talk about. The point that really hit me, when it talks about our vocation, I really dug into that and looked at scripture. What is our vocation? And I can tell you we all have individual vocation. That's what we do, whether we work, whether we're in a factory, whether we're a stay-at-home parent or a grandparent or just somebody who's part of the church. But ultimately, if we read on further in Ephesians, it talks about one unity under one body, under one Christ, Right? We all have the same vocation, those of us who are Christians. It's, it's to share the gospel, to live like Christ, and to share that love with the world. And that's the part that hit me hardest, is no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, you know, I'm thankful to be part of the church, mm. to be able to serve here, but we can all serve in different capacities. Right? Whether we have children or not, we all have family, parents, loved ones, and we're all part of the same community. So obviously you all are here today, mm. um, but our vocation's the same. And that's the thing I'm most thankful for is that God gave us a purpose through our salvation to be part of the family, but also a vocation to serve and love one another here. And that is good. Awesome. That dig that you did almost sounds like that should be a lesson at some point. <laughs> Maybe like a faith builder's lesson or something. That's good. Awesome. And this is great. One of the things I prayed for is just knowing that I wasn't going to be preaching. I was concerned that you all weren't going to be fed. That's something I'm concerned about. You need to be spiritually fed because you're going to war this week. And I'm watching God feed you through each other. This is super cool. Does anybody else have a testimony they'd like to share? Yes, ma'am. And if we could as much as possible go here and then all the way over there, <laughs> then all the way over here, we can mess with our dear brother as much as possible while he runs the microphone back and forth. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say I'm very thankful for you, Pastor. Mm. I'm very thankful for your love for the Lord. I'm very thankful for your love for this church family. Mm. And I'm most thankful for the Lord to use you as the vessel. I know we had talked about the message that really hit my heart on complaining. Yeah. And he opened my heart to a lot of things that week. And it was amazing how the devil kept wanting me to attack to want me to complain. But yet I was able to give it all to the Lord still. That's and I'm good. thankful for his love for me. That's good. I am still struggling with that message too. I think this is going to be the year of dealing with complaining in my life. I'm with you. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yes, right here, please. Yes. Do you mind? Yes. Did you want the microphone? 
you could just hold it. Yeah. Diane, and I'm not from here. I'm about 200 miles north. My sister and niece live here. This oh, is the Lord. first time I've got, been able to drag them to church. It's great. So I'm very happy with that. It's uh, good. I, live, I live in Glenny. Uh, I belong to the Lot Baptist Church. I've been a Christian for 71 years. Very proud of it. When I deliver it's mail, good. I talked to everybody that I could. <laughs> we had Bible study in my home for 15 years. A pastor came. Amen. Drug people from the mailbox to my house, and now they're in church. So oh, I thank good. God every day for my life. We thank God for you. 71 years, his child. Praise the Lord. When we started this church, we had people that had been saved for a long time. And we just believe that that is such a rich heritage. The relationship that you have with God is something that I look up to very much. And I'm chasing after it. I got saved when I was seven. I'm 41, so you do the math. I'm getting there. 37, 34 years of salvation. I'm catching up to you. But I'm so thankful for that. 71 years knowing Christ. Yes, yes, ma'am. That I go to, my grandparents went there, so wow. our family's been in that church for a long time. That's and that church good. is probably 140 years old. That's good. So. And you know, with knitted hearts over what Jesus has done for us, that you have a home away from home anytime you want to come and be with us. Good. Thank you. Before, while you run the microphone on, over to him, his dad sent a testimony first as well as a prayer request, I think. Um, for those of us that, that know um, Pastor Samples, and obviously uh, their son, do you mind if I use your name? You're, do you mind if I use your name? You're notorious anyway. <laughs> um, Brother Mark's dad is, means a very great deal to me. Anytime I meet a pastor who's been faithful in the ministry for years, I'm instantly looking up to them. And I've got a list of those men, and Pastor Samples is one of them. And his wife, Ramona, is just incredible. She's selfless. She's behind the scenes. She never gets attention. She's, she squirms when she gets appreciation. Uh, she's unbelievably appropriate. She's just flat-out dynamite. And it's been hard to watch her suffer because she pretends like she's fine. They had diagnosed her with what they thought they knew was going on, only to realize that her stomach from a previous surgery was completely obstructed by scar tissue. Mom Samples, we just call her mom, is 81, 81 years old, and went through one of the worst surgeries you can have. And we were ready for anything Mark was as well. And yet, how long, Brother Mark, was she in the hospital? Um, it wound up being 12 days, I think. 12 days. Yeah. And we were expecting a month. Easily. Yeah. So, Pastor Samples specifically wanted to thank you all for praying for his dear wife. It made all the difference, truly. Uh, the physicians are in shock at how rapidly she recovered, and we need to keep praying for her. And then he sends his appreciation for us sharing Mark with them. But he also asks us to pray for them because we all know who he is. When he is down there, they need even more prayer, Pastor says. So we're glad for that, all joking aside. And I just forwarded the message from Pastor Samples. If I didn't say that, he would probably threaten me. Um, but uh, the Lord has blessed and allowed you guys to go down there. We're thankful for that as well, been able to work while down there and stuff. So don't mean to steal your testimony, but Dad wanted me to take first shot before you did. Yes, sir, please. Absolutely. He has to get his shot in first. Yeah. <laughs> we understand that. But no, I personally would just like to say thank you to each of the members of our church family for your love and your care, all the text messages and phone calls and all of those things. Um, it's no secret that this is a family. Hmm. And it's wonderful when we take the time to see how each of the pieces came to be here. But it is truly God's work. And knowing that we had this group of people praying for us while we were gone, praying for um, some of you have met my family, some of you have not. And the fact that you would pray for them in spite of knowing me is pretty special. <laughs> but um, mom is home. She's doing well. Amen. Um, 
one of the fun parts about this was, like Pastor mentioned, she's very selfless. She doesn't like to have attention, and so when we got down there, uh, she was already in the hospital, so we, you know, that's where we went to see her, and the nurse was coming in, and how you doing, how you feel? Oh, I'm okay, everything's fine, and I had to send everybody out of the room and have a chat with mom and mm -hmm. tell her this is not the time to Say it. worry about what the nurses are thinking or how much work you're making them do. You have to be like me, be mean and be selfish. <laughs> Because when they say, what's your pain level? And we all see that you're about to fall over dead. You're saying one or two, this is not a good thing, yeah. right? So be honest. But yeah. she did very well with the surgery and she is doing well with the recovery. Um, thank you for praying for that, for our travels. Um, I will be heading back down next weekend to spend another couple of weeks with her. Uh, my sister from Texas is there now. She's got to get back home. So, um, again, appreciate prayers for travel. But, um, you know, Jeremiah 31, the Lord tells the prophet, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Mm. Yes. That doesn't make any sense to me because I change so much. I'm different all the time, but everlasting. Mm. And to know that there's nothing that I can do to break that love. There's nothing that circumstances can do to loosen that, regardless of what we're doing, regardless of what we're facing. Jesus loves me. Amen. Amen. That's my prayers. That's good. Thank you. Let's take a favorite song, and we'll keep this session open. Favorite song? You're ready. All right, we'll do two favorite songs this session. I'll come back to you. Yes, ma'am. 268. We'll get to it, make sure that we know it. My guess is we do. How firm a foundation. Would you guys like to stretch your legs just a little bit? All right, go ahead and stand. Let's stretch our legs. Give you a chance to shuffle a little bit if you want. Just so you know, I'm just about done with introduction and maybe halfway through first point normally. Just saying. All right, number 268, how firm a foundation. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, let's sing verse 2 together. Fear not, I am with thee, oh be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will still give thee aid, I'll strengthen thee, help thee. And cause thee to stand upheld by my gracious omnipotent hand. Go ahead and grab your seats, if you would, please. Yes, ma'am. Did you have a song? Okay, yes, please. Go ahead and grab your seats. One thirteen. It was Grandma's birthday. Oh, man, wow. Praise the Lord. And that makes her three in heaven? Two and a half. Two and a half. That's good. Praise the Lord. All right, 113, the old rugged cross. In the book of Hebrews, after the writer goes through the hall of faith, and he talks about how we ought to be chasing after Christ, and that others in the past have shown great regard for faith, he says this, 
He says, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. So what does that mean? Have you ever wondered this? You say, do they see us in heaven? And I've heard people say, there's no way they do. They're too busy in heaven. The writer of Hebrews says, wrong. We are surrounded by them. They are watching everything we are doing. And so can you imagine? Glorified in soul, not yet in body. Mrs. Alta Lawler joins us in singing the old rugged cross. She has met Jesus face to face. What an awesome thought. So let's sing number 113, first and last verses. We hold great high regard and appreciation both for Mrs. Lawler, Grandma, if that's okay with you guys, um, as well as the Savior who she loves. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rocket cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rocket cross and exchange it someday for a crown. We're going to sing that last verse and then on the chorus the piano will drop out. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true Its shame and reproach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Let's go back to Psalm 107. Verse number 23 will introduce us to our last session. They go down, verse number 23, they go down to the sea and ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man are, are at their wit's end. And they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. And maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. And when you see verse 29, if you're wondering if this is prophetic about Jesus, yes it is. This is talking about when his disciples are afraid because Jesus has fallen asleep on the back of the boat. And only God can say, peace be still. I've gotten to fish in the river that connects the two great lakes, Huron and Erie. And I've gotten to fish in that river. And still for me, no matter how many times I'm out there, the thing that I enjoy the most is when those big, huge freighters come through. And if you catch a fish when the, uh, catch a fish when the freighter come through, we call them freighter fish. And for whatever odd reason, they'll start biting right before those fish come. And so we wait for the freighters to come. And then after they come, after a few minutes, you get a couple waves. And those waves will sometimes be as high as two and a half feet. Almighty God will wave, uh, he'll lift waves ten times that and you'll never see him. 
what's more overwhelming is when he says, peace be still. There have been times in my life where he has said, peace be still. Very thankful for it. So with that said, if we want to give you one last chance, if there's something that you've been thinking, I want to thank the Lord for, give you a chance to do that. Yes, sir, I love it. Round number two, thank you. Please, oh, good. Song request. So we'll take that and I'll hold it, and then we'll take a few testimonies. Go ahead, what's the song request? 198. Go ahead, if you want to turn to 198, we'll have that ready. That's great. Was this his favorite? Oh, man, that's good. 98. Oh, man. 198. I was like, his favorite was Christmas. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. <laughs> Sorry. One nine, I got... I got caught up in his grandpa. I love your grandpa. He's with the Lord too. It's awesome. All right, we'll save this one. Uh, does anybody have any testimonies, words that they'd like to share? Yes, ma'am. Microphone's on its way if that's all right. Thank you. I just wanted to say, you know, reading the rest of that psalm and thinking about, you know, Jesus and his disciples and him mm. just, when you think about the storms of life that God allows you to go through, and they always have a purpose. The disciples went through that storm on the boat so that Christ could show his power and That's remind cool. them to trust in him. And it just reminded me of when we were going through our second adoption and we had uh, had a case we were really excited about and for whatever reason, we let our hopes get up that time. And we got the news that it wasn't, it wasn't for us. Um, God had closed that door hmm. and I remember I got home from the store after dropping my sister off because she's always there <laughs> um, hmm. and I just I just fell to the floor in the kitchen sobbing by myself home alone just just crying out to God why does it still hurt so much yeah. this isn't our first case this probably won't be the last one we've been through one adoption why does this hurt and when you're in the storm and the waves are high and the wind is blowing, it makes no sense. It's right. scary and it hurts. Only for the next day for God to say, this is why. And we got mm. the call for our, our youngest son, quite literally the next Good. morning, which was just wild. But yeah, it's just a, it's one of those things where when you're in the middle of the storm, just take courage because God is, God is there. He's with you. Sarah. He's on the boat. He's That's on it. the boat. Yeah, exactly. And the calm that's coming is greater than the storm could have ever been. That's it. Yes, sir, in the back, behind our computer today. Thank you. Mine kind of goes along with that. Um, I want to read James 1, 2, 3, and 4. Mm -hmm. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I'm not here to say that I'm perfect and my faith is perfect and my patience is perfect, mm -hmm. but um, over the last year, we've um, connected with some homeschool groups for athletics and different things, and we've met some new friends, and uh, through that process of building those relationships, I've had to reflect over um, some parts of my life that were a little more difficult at the time, mm -hmm. but they led me to meeting my wife and my um, building my family, and um, in looking back, and I've had some conversations with my kids about what exactly the Lord's will and how that, how that presents itself and how we should be praying for different things. And um, looking back, knowing now as I'm older and as I've, my relationship with the Lord has grown, how I'm more willing to go through something and, and kind of wait it, whereas before you get more anxious and you worry and you, you do things. And it's, it's not that I'm not struggling through things, but um, I have a lot more faith that the Lord has got me and that will eventually, while it's hard now, it will get better. And That's right. um, it's such a praise and relief for me to know that and, um, and hopefully pass that along to my family. That's um, good. good. Amen. And if I could, there's some people online who've made some comments and if I could just read oh, yeah. those real quick. Um, so one said, uh, good morning, everyone. We miss you so much. Hope everyone is working on less complaining and more encouraging. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Another one said, praise God, he is so good. 
um, and um, one requests that we sing Jesus Paid It All. Okay, let me write that down. We've got two songs to get through here, so we'll do one of them. We'll do Pastor Smith's favorite song, number 198, and then if someone is willing to find the number for Jesus Paid It All, we'll get to that next. Let's go ahead and uh, grab our hymn books. Don't worry if you're saying, I didn't get to give my testimony. I'll come back to you. We'll give you another chance. I'm normally still preaching, so you're good. Let's just sing number 198, There's Power in the Blood. Let's sing the first and last verse. I love this song. Go ahead and stand to your feet. You can't sing this one seated. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. His praise is to sing. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll take a couple more testimonies before we come back to this song that's been requested. This will be your last chance. Yes, ma'am, in the back. If you don't mind, the guys will make it back there. You just hold that thing so the folks online get to be a part as well. So I'll try not to be emotional, but I already am. Um, obviously, I'm holding a complete miracle in Amen. my hands right now. That's right. Um, all of the prayers that this church gave for Josie, she shouldn't be here. That's right. She shouldn't be healthy. Um, we lost her twin very early, and we expected to lose her as well. And I mean, I have a friend that works in my OB's office. And she said to me this week, you are the talk of the office. They can't believe you, <laughs> you had her and she's perfect. Um, so, cool. you know, Brian and I came here six years ago when our oldest was this size, this yeah. age, and we've never left. And you guys have become more than family. Um, I'm, Thrilled to have Josie. We obviously have six on each side of heaven now. And um, every baby's a blessing, but more than that, this church family has been the biggest blessing. My husband sat here, watched me blow my eyes out the whole service mm -hmm. because that's how much you guys mean to us. Wow. Words can't even express how blessed we are to have found this church. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we love you guys too. What a little miracle. It's awesome. Pray for baby Josie's salvation, right? Amen. Good. Anybody else? Real quick. Oh, we got a, we got a testimony. I'll come over. You got 125? Right. Oh, thank you. Good. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Well, four years ago, a little over four years ago, and um, the Lord's uh, tested us in mm. our relationships and everything in our family. Um, he's injured my knee and he has taken me a long journey to getting healed um, in this journey I've learned a lot um, I got to be a better companion with my wife mm -hmm. um, my family That's good. Um, it's been a it, there's been rough times there's been good times but um, I, he's got my knee on our on the right path now and um, I like to thank those that all have been in um, in our church family here that's been in the help of getting me in the right direction. Mm. Um, those that have come and visited, cards, um, that's uh, been a true blessing. Um, the phone calls, the prayers, um, prayers mean a lot. Um, you know, um, you don't realize when you're down and it could be just one simple thing, even a card that shows up in the mail that will uplift you, you know, and uh, 
he works in mysterious ways and the Lord knows what you're going through. And if you don't have the Lord in your life, you need to get the Lord in your life. Amen. Your life's great. Amen. And, um, you know, um, you know, a train can derail, but you can always put the train back up on the track <laughs> and get it going again. Um, so don't be afraid to let the Lord work in your life. Uh, he, he can do a lot of things for you. Um, Amen. I'm, I'm uh, grateful he's put me on the track and going in the right direction right now. Um, so I, w I just want to thank everyone also, like I said, for everything that everybody's done. So mm. I appreciate that very much. And thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me and my family. That's good. Thank you. Keep praying for healing for Brother Dave as well. Still going through it. Thank you so much. It's not a small thing to hear that man praise the Lord for his goodness. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Microphone's on its way. Uh, I don't remember your name, but um, the heritage that you have is something that I don't have. Um, I am thankful that at the age of 20, um, I was born in a trailer park. <laughs> and I don't deserve the forgiveness that I've been given, but I am thankful that I have been saved and I'm thankful for my family and the heritage that I get to give to my kids that I was never given in a godless home. So I'm very thankful for that. Amen. I was starting to think, brother, I left out, I didn't. I wasn't born in a trailer park, and then I realized I was born in the biggest trailer park in the world, <laughs> the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, man. <laughs> we have nothing up there. So there, beat you. I was born in the biggest trailer park in the country. <laughs> Amen. Five cars that aren't mobile and one that is. That's good. There is no one that is something before you come to Christ. There is no one that is something before you come to Christ. Everyone's nothing. Anybody else real quick before we do our next song? Yes, ma'am. It's on its way. He's on his way, your boy. I need to get the, the nerve up, so I'll get through it. It's okay. Take your time. <clears throat> um, I've always kind of struggled with uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where it says, my grace is sufficient for thee, because I always felt like sufficient was the short changing. Mm. Um, God's grace, and wow. um, last week, starting to have my quiet time with God, and uh, before I prayed, it was like one of those days where I felt very overwhelmed and heavy-hearted, and I just, I didn't even know where to start. So, I didn't even know what to say, where to start in, in prayer, and so I had my Bible in my lap, and I asked God just to put my fingers to where I needed it, and mm -hmm. I opened up to Psalm 18, and there were two verses that were highlighted there. It was um, verse 2 and 6. And verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. 6 says, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. And by the word distress I had, had written, it said, to be in a tight place in a corner hemmed in. And that's exactly how I felt. Mm. And when I got done reading that, my eyes went back to verse 2. I have a rock, a fortress, a deliverer, my God, who yes. is my strength, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. What more do I need? And I felt like God whispered to me, you don't need an answer right now for this trial. My grace is sufficient for now. Wow. And it just brought so much meaning. That verse became more precious. That's good. I just praise God that was that built in. Amen. What an awesome definition of sufficiency. It's everything I need. That's good. Anybody else? Yes, in the back. I love. I love to you. Amen. Praise God. That was good. 
Oh, thank you so much. That was good. Awesome. It's the greatest thought any, any individual could ever have. I love Jesus. That is exactly what we will shout for all of eternity. You should get to know how wonderful he is in this life because you can't imagine what the next will be like. Anyone else? Real quick, last chance. This will be it. We'll wrap up. I think you're right. Yeah, that was good. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, I'd just like to say um, God has done a lot of amazing things in everyone's life. The best thing he's gave us is America. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's um, good. <laughs> I'd like to request a song um, okay. 531. Okay, 531. What is, uh, what's the song? Oh, man, okay. Let's do that song, and then we'll come down to 125. Let's go to 531. That's good. <laughs> Amen. Raising them right. 531, America the Beautiful. We have a couple songs to sing. So we'll sing, uh, oh, man, I love this entire song. We'll sing just the first verse. We'll make sure we work this into our worship in the future as well. spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountains majesty above the fruited plain America America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. All right, let's go over to 125. Jesus paid it all. We've got one more portion of scripture and then we'll wrap up the service. We'll sing the first verse together. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Let's go back to Psalm 107. We'll wrap up this psalm. We'll continue our reading in verse number 33. Psalm 107, verse number 33. One more song, and we'll close the service in prayer. Thank you for each that said something as well as for each that didn't. You can't have people saying stuff if you don't have people listening. God has been glorified. And if you didn't say anything, but you said it in your heart, God heard that just as clearly as the voices that spoke. We praise the Lord for that. Psalm 107, verse number 33. He turneth rivers into a wilderness. And the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And so the fields plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes, and he causeth them to wander in the wilderness, for there is no way. Yet sitteth, uh, setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, then they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. He loves you and he favors you. 
The greatest way that you could ever come back complaining is to praise Him. You find yourself struggling, you find yourself frustrated, angry, spewing poison and affecting others. Stop. Start thanking Him. Find something to say thank you for. Because you are His people. And He loves you and He is taking care of you. Father, we are thankful for the testimonies that have been shared. For Lord, they have fallen on both my ears and my heart like sermons, like a hammer. Thank you for that. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to bring all things to our remembrance, that we would continue to learn and grow, that you would protect this assembly from critical spirits, but to be encouraging. Lord, we have had people that have gone through intense trials. Praise you today. If they can praise you from the context of a trial, all of us can praise you. Thank you for the rich heritage that you have given us. We are delighted in our salvation. We are glad for life. For every day that you choose not to come is another chance to give to you. But Lord, we look forward to your return. So you are our rock. You are the shelter in a time of storm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 263. Let's stand to our feet. We'll sing number 263. We'll sing just the first verse. And then Brother Mark Samples will come and close us in prayer, if you don't mind. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied, shelter in the time of storm oh jesus is the rock in a weary land a weary land a weary land oh jesus is the rock in a weary land a shelter in the time of storm Father, truly it has been good to be in your house this morning, to spend time with your people, reflecting on who you are and the ways that you have worked in our lives, things that we do not deserve, things that in our wildest imaginations we could never come up with. We have been blessed by your hand. Father, we ask that we would remember the way our hearts are this morning. That as we go from this place, we will go with hearts that are full of joy and rejoicing and praising. And remember who our God is. Father, we ask that you would protect us as we go back out into the world, that you would help us to focus on you and to see with the eyes of faith those around us who need to know who Jesus is. Lord Jesus, we love you today. Thank you for loving us. In your sweet and precious and holy name we pray. Amen.